So in this chapter, chapter three in your Campbell textbook, we're going to be looking at water and the fitness of the environment. A few objectives that we have here in this chapter are looking at the importance of hydrogen bonding to the properties of water. We're also going to be looking at the four unique properties of water and how each of these contributes to life on Earth. We'll also be looking at how it is to interpret the pH scale and we'll examine the role or the importance of buffers in biological systems. First off, we want to look at water as the molecule that supports all of life. We know that all living organisms require water more than any other substance. Um, about three quarters of the earth we know is also submerged in water and that it is this property of the abundance of water that allows for habitability on earth. First section in chapter three looks at the polarity of water molecules which results in hydrogen bonding. It's this polarity of water molecules that allows them to form hydrogen bonds with one another. And these hydrogen bonds contribute to these various properties that water is capable of exhibiting. In the second section, uh, four emergent properties of water which contribute to Earth's fitness for life are discussed. The first of which is cohesion. Uh, the next is the moderation of temperature. Uh, third, the insulation of bodies of water by floating ice, and of course the property of water, um, that of its ability to be the universal solvent. In looking at the first property of water, here we have to examine a few vocabulary terms, the first of which is cohesion, and that refers to hydrogen bonds which hold substances together, and particularly the relationship of water with water. Adhesion refers to, uh, again, the hydrogen bonds which holds substances together, and in this case the relationship would be uh, water to some other substance, uh, for instance glass. Capillary action, the formal definition of that, uh, speaks of water being able to be transported throughout various types of vessels, um, particularly in use with the plants and its ability to transport water and nutrients using both the forces of cohesion and adhesion in the process of transpiration. Surface tension finally measures the difficulty of something to be able to stretch or break the surface of a liquid and it's quite readily known that water has a very uh, high surface tension more than most liquids which is what allows organisms like a water skimmer to kind of slide and walk across the surface of liquid water. Um, second uh, sort of emergent feature of water is its ability to moderate temperature and here we have to kind of look at the uh, two types of energy forms kinetic versus thermal energy, thermal referring to heat and specifically the amount of heat energy um, able to be raised uh, one gram by one degree Celsius. So thermal heat referring to the total energy within a particular substance. And temperature, of course, referring to the average kinetic energy uh, per molecule. Now the moderation of temperature, one of the reasons why water has the ability to moderate temperature in such a successful way is its uh, high heat or high specific heat capacity as compared to other substances and that is the amount of heat absorbed or lost for one gram of a substance and its ability to change its temperature by one degree Celsius um, is uh, rather significant for water, for water which is why it has the uh, capacity to moderate temperature. Um, again looking at the heat of vaporization water also has a very high heat of vaporization and it has the capacity for evaporative cooling. Uh, the, one of the third emergent properties of water is its insulation of bodies by way of floating ice. If we look at these two diagrams here, we notice that in the ice versus the liquid water um, configuration, we see that the bond angles here are slightly more acute than we would find in the more ordered structure, the lattice structure of the ice um, sort of hydrogen bonding which occurs. These uh, sort of more organized bonds allow for uh, air pockets to develop in the center, um, allowing for uh, the buoyancy of ice then to be able to 
um, generate that, that sort of flotation property, allowing it to kind of skid across uh, liquid water. Looking in at the fourth uh, sort of property or emergent property of water, that of the ability of its uh, solvents or universal solvent-like qualities, uh, a couple of things that we should define first, what solutions are. Um, these are just homogeneous mixtures of two or more substances. Uh, we want to differentiate between, of course, a solute and a solvent, water being a universal solvent, and that is that which other substances particularly things like salts can dissolve into. And of course, when you recognize what types of solutions these things are, they would all be classified as aqueous. Also, in looking at the solvent of life, uh, particularly with the hydrophilic and hydrophobic qualities, which are attributed to why oil and water cannot mix. Water, of course, is polar. And so it is considered hydrophilic, and that is it's attracted to other polar molecules and can dissolve those things. Hydrophobic molecules, however, tend to repel water, which again is why oil and water cannot mix. A couple more definitions here on concentration and molarity. Here we're looking at solutes concentrations in aqueous solutions and its diverse qualities. Now we uh, turn our attention to acid and base conditions, which affect living organisms. Uh, we want to first look at water's ability to dissociate into uh, particular types of ions, um, with special attention to these hydronium and hydroxide ions. The hydronium ions is typified by symbol H+. Uh, the symbol of that actually indicates an H3O+, which water can dissociate into, and that's with the acquiring of an additional hydrogen here on the side and of course it can also dissociate into a hydroxide uh, ion. When we look at the properties of acids and bases we know that acids typically release hydrogen ions or protons into solution and bases can and have the ability to reduce these H plus concentrations by the acceptance of the hydrogen ions and the release of these hydroxide ions. Uh, let's look at some examples of uh, strong acids and weak acids and strong bases and so forth. Um, this is an example here of a hydrochloric acid HCl. It is a strong acid and that means when it interacts in any type of polar solution the dissociation or dissolution is complete. In more organic types of acids, things that have uh, carboxyl type groups, um, those would be considered weak acids. So in this case, not all of the acid molecules will dissociate completely into their ionic states. Strong bases such as sodium hydroxide will completely dissociate um, in a water solvent. And some weak bases such as bicarbonate, ammonia, and others with the amino groups attached to them will tend to be uh, weak bases. pH, of course, is a relative measure of the negative log of the molar concentration of H plus ions. So the closer that you are to a pH of 7, the more that solution is considered neutral. Uh, the further down in the scale, the lower the number, the more acidic, and further up would be considered basic. Again, I'm looking at a pH scale here with a value of about 0, up until about five or so would be considered acidic. Um, those uh, above eight to 14 would be considered uh, more on the basic side with the hydroxide ions. And those uh, somewhat within the scale of 6.5 to a low eight, uh, particularly that of pH seven are considered neutral uh, solvents or solutions. Buffers play a very important role in biological systems, and what a buffer is essentially is just a weak acid and its corresponding base, and here's the example below of bicarbonate. And what these buffers do is that they have the capacity of maintaining a very constant pH through biological systems. Uh, an example of this is that, you know, if we start looking at just a minute amount of a strong acid that is, let's say, added to one liter of pure water. In this case, the pH will go from 7, neutral, uh, down to 2.0, which is considered acidic. 
However, if the same amount of a strong acid is applied to one liter of blood that contains some type of buffer solution in it, uh, the pH value will only increase, or, or I'm sorry, the pH value will only decrease uh, from 7.4 to 7.3, so the difference is rather insignificant. Here again, we're looking at the action of buffers. There is a buffering range here, preventing any uh, sharp spikes or decreases in pH values. Finally, some of the properties of water which make it so important in biology. Buffers, of course, illustrate the law of mass action, and that is the addition of one reactant on one side of reversal equation, driving the system in the direction that uses up that particular compound. In life's chemistry, of course, when we go back to the origins, began in the water. Water and other chemicals um, have been said to come maybe, you know, to Earth on, on comets. And of course, water we know is an essential condition for life to develop. So that's it for chapter two. Um, go ahead and uh, complete the homework assignments and read chapter two. And if you have any questions, please feel free to ask during, during our tutorial days. And if you have any um, immediate questions, uh, please don't hesitate to email me. Thanks.